Bismillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sahbihi wa alaikum everyone. I uh, wanted to share a quick reflection with you. Sometimes I look at the comments and videos and uh, you know people post all kinds of things and I think some of those things are teaching moments and um, you might have noticed that in, uh, in lectures sometimes I'll wear traditional clothes, Pakistani clothes, um, I'll wear um, Afghani clothes, I'll wear, I've even worn Malaysian clothes and I wear American clothes and Western clothes and I'll wear a suit and a tie and things like that. And um, we know in many Muslim cultures we've been raised to think that when you dress um, in a way that is representative of your culture, so if I'm from Pakistan and I'm wearing a shalwar kameez, then I'm dressed Islamically. And if somebody's wearing their traditional Sudanese dress, then they're dressed Islamically. And if somebody's wearing their, the batik in Malaysia, uh, then they're dressed Islamically. But if somebody's wearing a suit and a tie, they're, they're dressed like the Westerner or like the non-Muslims. It's, it's a secular dress. Um, and this notion actually is something that I want to help all of you understand, at least from my point of view. I'm not saying that I have the correct understanding, but to the best of my ability. What I've been able to understand about this subject is, and it's something that I, I thought about for a long time, and then I asked, I traveled to Oxford a few years ago and asked Dr. Akram Nadabi, one of my favorite people in the world, a Hadith researcher, can you help me define Islamic dress? Like, if I want to attend an Eid gathering, or, um, and I want to dress my best, and to me, my best, I was raised not in a very traditional setting, and when we went somewhere dressed up, I, I, we wore a suit. My dad wore a suit, I wore a suit, we wore ties. Um, and that was normal for us. That's the culture in which we were, were grown. So is that un-Islamic because non-Muslims wear it? And he had some really interesting things to say. I'll add some things to what he said too. He said actually, in his understanding, the sunnah would be to dress your best. Our religion gives us guidance on how we should cover ourselves. The way that the clothing should be modest, it should be decent. But the, the style of clothing, and of course for men there's guidelines, guidelines like we don't wear gold and silk, right? Uh, and how what parts of our body should be covered and how decently they should be covered. But outside of that, whether I decide to dress in uh, cultural garments that are American or Canadian or they're Chinese or African or, or Afghani or Pakistani or Bangladeshi or Malaysian, it doesn't actually matter. Uh, all of, and he said the sunnah would be to dress your best, to dress your actual best. Uh, so to me personally, I have absolutely no distinction between wearing the nicest shawar kameez I have or the nicest suit and tie that I have. It's not one is more Islamic than the other. Uh, to, just like somebody who, you know, uh, someone from the Eastern, you know, from South Asia or from the Arab world or whatever is no, no more a Muslim than an American, uh, you know, born and raised here from whatever background. If they're white, black, Hispanic, you know, if they're, if they're Caucasian, if they're what, whatever background they have, if they become Muslim, they're just as Muslim as everybody else. All cultures are, you know, the, the, the diversity of our cultures is something Allah Himself created. He Himself created this diversity. So there's nothing wrong or un-Islamic about that. And then just finally, I'll add something to that. You know, if today we had a time, there was a time machine and Abu Jahl from the Prophet's time, right? He traveled through time and he showed up in front of your house and he walked by your house dressing how he used to dress back in the day. You would look at him and you'd say, MashaAllah, I wonder what the Shaykh's name is. Because he'd have a beard, he'd have a turban, he'd have a tawban, and you would think that this guy is dressed really Islamically. The worst enemies of Islam were dressed in Arab garments, right? So the, clo the Arab clothing isn't Islamic clothing. Pakistani clothing isn't Islamic clothing. What is Islamic is actually just you dressing nicely. So for me, more recently I developed a thought that when I'm teaching the Quran, when I'm sharing something about the Quran, especially my lecture series on a deeper look, that I'm doing something that I consider one of the most noble opportunities. Like I'm, I'm sharing something, I'm studying the Quran, and I'm teaching the best of what I know about it and sharing it with as many people as I can. And so when I do that, I should actually dress my best. And so I'm gonna try to do that. So there's no, to me, there's no harm in dressing that way. I don't think anybody who studies fiqh deeply and uh, follows the usul traditionally would actually differ in any, any of these conclusions. So sometimes we, we develop these opinions about Islam that are actually not, um, they're not from the actual texts. They're not actually sourced in the, 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 the Quran and the Sunnah if properly researched. So we just have to become a, a little more humble about what we don't know. And I, I pray if I'm, if I'm incorrect about any of this, I pray that I'm corrected and I pray that I learn better, inshallah ta'ala. But for now, the best, to the best of my understanding, 
so long as the guidelines of what should be covered in modesty are observed, cult clothes from any culture, any culture, are absolutely acceptable. And, you know, just on that same note, I know there's a lot of differences about the beard and whether it should be long or not, or you can color it or not, all that stuff. You know what? My advice to you is to actually study with somebody who understands fiqh and studies it deeply. Um, and so, and this is not public discourse. We're not supposed to be discussing somebody's clothing or somebody's, you know, uh, uh, the way somebody looks or somebody's haircut, you know, publicly. These are things for your, for, I'm supposed to learn these things for myself, which is why you're not going to find me publicly commenting on most of those kinds of things because they're for your own personal development. But unfortunately, we've turned Islam into something where we look at appearance and then we figure out if someone's really Islamic or not, right? Um, so, and that's become a gauge for whether or not someone's a real Muslim. And I, I think that's unfortunate. You know, there are, there, there's, our, our deen is very rich. It's very rooted in principles. Um, and I pray that inshallah we're able to, uh, to really follow it according to those principles and not jump to conclusions. Again, finally, I just want to say, this is actually not about me feeling judged. Why are you wearing a tie? Why, because I couldn't care less, honestly. It doesn't even matter. But for me, I want you to know that your and I'm special. This discussion is specifically about men. I'm not even talking about women's clothing today, but culturally, so long as you're following whatever guidelines, you're not any more or less Islamic. I'm not more Islamic because I'm wearing a shalwar kameez or a thobe, and less Islamic because I'm wearing a t-shirt. That's not true. That's just not true. Let's speak about our deen in a way that represents the teaching of, teachings of our deen and think about it in a way that Allah and His Messenger would want us to think about it. Barakallahu li walakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.